This lesson's for fifth grade. This lesson three over volcanoes. This goes through chapter five, our dynamic earth. In this lesson, we're going to talk about different types of volcanoes, where they form, um, shapes they might take, how they build land. We'll talk about island chains and stuff like that. So let's get right to it. Where are volcanoes found? Okay. Volcanoes, they're found on land and on the ocean floor. Fun fact, more than 80% of the volcanic activity on Earth actually occurs on the ocean floor. Most volcanoes are actually underwater. What is a volcano? A volcano is an opening in Earth's crust. Um, and we know they're only in certain places on Earth. They know they're not here or where we live in, in Kentucky, but you can find them most commonly where plates meet. Um, as we know, Earth's crust is broken up to a number of moving plates because we learned about that plate tectonics. Um, for example, there's a circle of volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean. What you see here, it's called the Ring of Fire. This is the Ring of Fire. Um, the Ring of Fire allows the boundaries of the plates that meet around the... Uh, or it follows the boundaries of the plates that meet around the Pacific Ocean. Volcanoes are more likely to erupt at these plate boundaries than anywhere else on Earth. Well, what's an eruption? An eruption is the outpouring of melted rock or gas or ashes or a combination of these. Most of us know what an eruption is. Not all volcanoes erupt at plate boundaries but or so why do most of them occur there well after collecting data scientists discovered that most volcanoes tend to erupt in a place where one plate is pushed under another plate so what's happening when rocks in a plate is being pushed down so you have two plates and as they meet, one slides under the other. Well, the one that slides under the other is going to reach the heat and pressure of the mantle, and it's going to melt. Magma is going to form from that melted um, rock or melted plate, and it's going to pull up into a chamber or a magma chamber underneath the crust. Well, that magma is going to sit there for years and years and years and years, and may not do anything. Well, so one day, something may happen. There may be a crack that forms, and the pressure of that chamber is going to become way too much one day, and it can't hold in all the magma anymore. Well, then the magma is going to erupt and reach up toward the surface of the earth because we know heat rises, and that's why that most occur in those situations. All volcanoes have at least one vent, so that's the opening. So you, if you have a volcano, this right here where the lava comes out, this area right here is called the vent. All volcanoes have at least one vent. Some may have two. Some have some on the sides. They may have another vent here, but most commonly they at least have one in that area. Well, over time, lava, ashes, and gas are going to erupt through the vent and form a cup-shaped depression around the vent, and that's called a crater. This area now becomes a crater, and that's usually found at the top of the mountain. Well, sometimes the magma chamber beneath, where that would be about in here, if you were looking at the volcano, and the volcano is going to collapse inside of itself, and that forms a caldera. A caldera. Okay. So, where do volcanoes found? They're usually found at plate boundaries, and they most commonly erupt where one plate is pushed underneath another one. How do volcanoes build land? Well, sometimes magma is going to cool and harden before it ever reaches the surface. Usually it 
will erupt and cool and harden here and it forms all the land that you see but sometimes it cools and hardens underneath within the crust and the mantle here and uh, forms different um, landforms and different types of mountains and volcanoes a dike which you see here is when um, lava or magma cools and hardens in a vertical crack so if it's going up and down and cools and hardens it's called the dike if it does the same thing yet it's horizontal it's called a sill sometimes when sills are trying to form they may dome upward and that forms a lack of lift and that raises all the rock above it and that kind of makes a little hill and the largest and deepest of all of the chambers or formations is called the batholith. And the batholith is huge and it has no um, shape. It's really irregular as you can see. It's not horizontal or dome or vertical. It is very irregular. When lava comes out of the vent right here, it's liquid. And lava forms a solid layer of rock as it hardens, as you can see along the sides. And over years, um, that may... It, as it erupts, it's going to get higher and higher and higher, and that increased the height of the volcano and the mountain. And a new land, uh, the mountain's a new land that the volcano built. There are three different types of volcanoes, active, dormant, and extinct. The difference is active is currently erupting or recently erupted. Dormant means it's kind of asleep. It's not totally wiped out. It's not dead, but it hasn't done anything in a long time. And a dead volcano that does nothing and will never do anything again is extinct. Active volcanoes are different in how they form and in the shapes that they build in the mountains. A shield volcano, they're built by thinner fluid lava that uh, spreads over a large area. These mountains usually have a really broad base and uh, have gently sloping sides. Cinder cone volcanoes, they're built by um, thick lava that's thrown high in the air. So you say you have lava coming out, and, it, poof, 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 and the chunks and cinders are going up in the air. And they fall down, and they make a cone shape. And that has a narrow base and the steep sides. That's cinder cone. And then composite volcanoes are built by layers of ash and cinders that are sandwiched between uh, layers of hardened lava. Um, the shape of one cone formed by a composite volcano usually looks the same as the opposite side, so they're pretty equal in the sides. That's composite. Okay. Finally, how do volcanoes build islands? The Hawaiian Islands are an island chain. So that's a line of volcanic mountains. They know that, well, scientists know Hawaiian Islands are sitting on a tectonic plate and that tectonic plate is moving. Well, as it's moving, it's um, passing over something called a hot spot. Well, over millions of years, the lava that erupts from that hot spot formed a mountain, as you can see here. Eventually, the mountain's going to grow taller and taller than the ocean surface, so it rose above the surface, and the plate that moved the island away from the hot spot began to form new land. So it formed new land, and they pushed off, and these used to be here, but then they moved off as the plate moved. In areas where the ocean floor plate is pushed under another ocean floor plate, an island arc forms. As the plate is pushed down, it melts, as we know, that usually happens. Magma forms, it rises upward, it erupts through the ocean floor, so this is happening on the ocean floor, not on land. And these eruptions form a series of volcanic islands along the plate boundary. The Aleutian Islands in Alaska form an island arc. So there's quite a bit that we learned in this lesson over volcanoes, um, how they formed islands, how they built land and mountains, and where did we find them, which we know um, is usually where plate boundaries are, where one plate is pushed under another. Uh, if you have any questions about volcanoes, feel free to ask me or message me on Edmodo.